All right, we're going to do here, <clears throat> my hope is we're going to do uh, problem 2.53 and just kind of do it by sketching here. And we're going to talk about um, the problem students have with that problem. Um, do my best here, which isn't very good. Um, we had 200 up and 100 up and then 320 down because of the... Uh, of the uniform distributed load and we're going to talk about how when you when two forces are concurrent you can kind of you know this was 100 up and this was 320 down which this all became if you would 220 and then we had 400 down and the question is what forces that a and b a and b would be uh, equal to those forces as they were described um, and what you're going to see is you can solve this problem any number of ways, but the first step is going to be pretty much uh, determine a, a um, equal force system to what we have here. And so what we have here is basically we know that we, if we want to know the force, we take the sum of the forces. So the sum of the forces is equal to 200 plus 200 minus I'm sorry, 200, this is 200, this is 100, this is a double hatch, 320, and this is 400. And so what we have is we have 200 plus 100 minus 320 minus 400, and we have that equal to uh, 300 up. So minus 420. So that's what we know. That's what the forces are. Now we need to add the moments. And the moments, if you will look like, you'll start to realize you can do moments pretty easily if you know these moment arms. It's just this multiplication of two lists. And so our list would be, the first list would be the moment arm list. The moment arm list in this case is 4 and then 8 and then 12. And those are our distances away from this zero, zero point here, forgetting to put zero, zero. So we can have a moment arm list, and we can have a force list equal to 200. We'll just make this a minus 220, and then a minus 400. Now, don't be confused in terms of um, thinking you're doing any kind of moment calculations in the traditional way, but what you're doing is you're multiplying 4 by 200, 8 by minus 220, and 12 by minus 400. And so we have moment, basically the moment is going to be about 800 in magnitude for that one, 800 positive, and this one it's going to be 0, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 to 1, 17, 60, 0 minus 17, 60, and this is minus 4,800. So if we take the sum of that, we have something in the order of a value, I think it's around 5,620, but let me go ahead and should have my calculator with me, but do that. But let's see if we can bring in the calculator on this kind of monstrosity of a program. Um, um, and your brain is really, ah, we don't need the calculator to do it by hand. Well, looks like this is... Uh, That would be minus 4,000, so minus 5760. So that's our moment. Now what we know is that the force, so now we have the force and we have the moment, so we can get the moment arm of the sum system by taking minus 5760, which is the sum of the moments, divided by the sum of the forces, which we said was minus 420 and we get some resultant out here. I think it's at about someplace at that point. So that becomes the ultimate resultant. So that said, we know so our ultimate resultant is someplace out here equal to that distance there and now I do need the calculator but um, so we have some general overized resultant at a certain re resultant moment. You know the molen arm, the moment arm of the resultant and the resultant out there. Now, what we now need is a sum of forces that equal to that equals um, 420 down. So, 
you're going to start with the fact that if you a, no matter what a is, well, no matter what a is, it has no moment about that point. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out what force out here at b, I'm sorry, what force out here at b gives you a moment of 5760. And so whatever that force is, so you're going to take, in other words, this sum of the moments and divide it by the total 16 feet and that's the force at B. And then you're just going to play around because in addition to that, you're going to need to get a spinning moment, either positive or negative, either back this way or back the other way to make up the difference to get the 5760. So that's that process here. And I'll go through it one more time. Let me go ahead and let's see what I can do with this ink thing. Um, trying to find the array, so I'll just kind of try to new try a new slide here, a blank slide here. All right, so now we're back to here. All right, and review, start inking. So if in fact, right, you have some force out here, right, which you've determined, but you want it to be 420 force, 420. Um, pounds, I guess, if this, I don't know if this is pounds going down, right? This is not going to be 420, right? So maybe it's less than 420, or maybe it's more. In addition, you know that you can add, if you, if you have a moment on a 16, right? You know that if you add one pound in each direction, equal and opposite, you're going to get 16 foot pounds. And if you add two pounds, equal and opposite, you're going to get 32 foot-pounds. So what you end up doing is ending up adding that vector plus a couple, right, that ends up uh, bringing it to the point where your sum is still 420 down, but you've also got the moment. All right, which takes us to this last concept here that uh, we will have talked about, and we'll actually work through this one uh, in class very quickly. Um, and I'll go do it and finish it out here again one time. I'm going to once again go to a new slide. Go to review. Start inking. And here is the last general concept in terms of moving forces. If in fact I have some force out here, okay, I'll call that F1. And I want to, you know I can slide it anywhere along its line of action. Right? I can slide it anywhere up and down here and not change the dynamics of a rigid body. If, however, I want to move it to some other point, I need to calculate this moment arm distance. I can now slide the force down there, but then I also have to um, add to it a couple. You get what's called a force couple system, and that couple is equal to force times the moment arm distance or the perpendicular distance. So that couple here, if I want to slide this force one from here to there, I can do that. I can slide forces, but then I have to make them a force couple system. So let's do an example here off on the side. Let's say for all intents and purposes, this is 100 pounds and this is eight feet. Well, this is a 100 pounds, if that's that same point then a moment of, and that would be a negative 800 foot-pounds. So this system is exactly, exactly equal to that system in terms of it's how it acts on a body. So you can slide vectors anywhere up and down their line of action and not change the st statics of the problem. And you can slide vectors perpendicular if in fact you add a couple to the system equal to the force times the perpendicular distance that you're sliding. That becomes um, important, uh, at least in doing problems and learning to simplify and what's going on inside of structures as they get more complex. And so that essentially is what they were trying to teach you in problem 2.53. But you, if you're going to have equal systems, they need to have the sum of the forces equal and the sum of the moments equal. And so you need to double check that when you're done with the problem or else you haven't really done that kind of 
just determining whether you're wrong, not necessarily just if you're just right. So we're going to go ahead and stop this, stick it out, and see what we do. I'll go through and do this one more time, probably do it in class. Um, not a, kind of an interesting problem.